Good evening. Welcome to Channel 5 News at 10. I'm your anchor, Brendan McGroder. Our lead story tonight is the history of Buffalo. This story is brought to you by reporter Brandon Margeson. We're taking you now live to Brandon. Thanks, Brendan. Are you ready for a trip through Buffalo's history? Buffalo was founded in 1805, and seven years later, it was burned to the ground in the War of 1812. The city of Buffalo was officially incorporated in 1832, and thus began its everlasting rebuilding process. The first instance of rebuilding was the Erie Canal. Built from 1817 to 1825, the Erie Canal was 363 miles long, providing a fast and efficient route from all the way to Buffalo. It was 4 feet deep by 40 feet wide. Along the Erie Canal sparked business and communities. This helped to develop Buffalo's economy. The next step in rebuilding was the implementation of the transshipment of grain. Ships would transport grain to grain elevators created by Joseph Dart in 1842. The grain would then be shipped from Buffalo out to the Atlantic Ocean and beyond. With the help of Irish immigrants who made a home in the first ward, the grain industry became a revolutionary step for Buffalo's economy, creating a boom in industrial achievement. During both world wars, Buffalo became a hub for the production of steel. Lackawanna Steel and Bethlehem Steel were the two major producers of steel in Buffalo. Lackawanna Steel Company was relocated to Buffalo in 1902, at which it became the largest steel manufacturer in the world. It was a dominant force until 1922, when Bethlehem Steel took over its company. Bethlehem Steel was then a huge producing force in Buffalo until 1983. The steel industry in Buffalo helped provide jobs and prosperity to Buffalo's economy. Also, with the mass production of steel, the U.S. was able to win both world wars. The next rebuilding step provided jolt to Buffalo's economy. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla were in a heated battle over electricity. Edison and J.P. Morgan believed in their system of direct current, while Tesla and George Westinghouse believed in their system of alternating current. Alternating current won out and was ultimately used to power Buffalo, also known as the City of Light, during the Pan Am Exposition. The Pan American Exposition was designed to celebrate North, South, and Middle Americas in the islands of the seas. It included new technologies such as electricity, incubators, and x-rays, and brought people from all over the world to see the improvements and developments of America, including two U.S. presidents, William McKinley and Teddy Roosevelt. Along with the introduction of an electric city, Buffalo was home to many new and revolutionary inventions. We were home to the Pierce Arrow Company, one of the first automobile companies in the United States. Pierce Arrow got its start in 1901 when they created the first one-cylinder car. The signature logo of Pierce Arrow Car is the helmeted archer on the front hood. Buffalo was also the home of the first air conditioner. It was invented by Willis Carrier because he was trying to stop the ink on papers from blotting from the heat. John Oshie was the first to create two separate windshield wipers here in Buffalo. Another very impressive industrial achievement in Buffalo is Shea's Theater. Michael Shea had a huge role in the creation of this immaculate theater. It opened on January 16, 1926, with a final cost of $2 million. Shea made prices cheap so that everyone would be able to go. Shea's Theater was home to one of the largest freestanding balconies in the United States. Buffalo has also had a strong connection to U.S. presidents. Millard Fillmore took up permanent residence in Buffalo in 1822 before he became America's 13th president. He was also the first chancellor at the University of Buffalo, now known as SUNY University at Buffalo. Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and 24th President of the United States, lived in Buffalo from 1854 until 1882 and served as Buffalo's mayor from 1882 until 1883. William McKinley was shot by Leon Solzgaard on September 6, 1901 at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo and died in Buffalo on the 14th. 
Theodore Roosevelt was then sworn in on September 14, 1901, at the Ansley Wilcox Mansion, now the Theodore Roosevelt Inaugural National Historic Site, becoming one of the few presidents to be sworn in outside of Washington, D.C. Lastly, Buffalo has a huge sports background. Buffalo's sports background got to start with the creation of the Rock Pile in 1938. It was home to the Buffalo Bisons and the Bills from 1959 to the 1970s. The Buffalo Bisons, a dominant Triple A baseball program, moved to its current stadium in 1988. James Griffin, the mayor of Buffalo from 1978 to 1993, created a pilot field in downtown Buffalo to be the home of the Bisons. Bison Stadium has since been called several different names, but the common theme of Buffalo in its past has always stood out. Now the name of Bison Field is Coca-Cola Field. The rock pile has been a symbol of Buffalo sports until 1988 when it stopped operations. The Bills, thanks to Ralph Wilson, moved to Ralph Wilson Stadium in 1973. While the Bills experienced a tremendous four falls, they still represent the prowess of Buffalo sports. In the 1970s, the Buffalo Sabres called War Memorial Auditorium, a.k.a. the Odd, their home. The Buffalo Sabres later moved to its current home, First Niagara Center, in 1996. Thanks to Pagulas, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Buffalo Bills will continue to represent Buffalo spirit. Now that we have covered the past, it is time to look to the future. With the ongoing efforts of the Pagulas to help make Buffalo sports prosper, and continue the revitalization. Our future is looking bright. The continuous support with Canal Side and the City of Buffalo is helping to make our city great again. A final step forward is the Buffalo Billion Project. This project will help with advanced manufacturing, health and life services, tourism, the workforce, entrepreneurship, and the revitalization of Buffalo. It is providing numerous jobs and opportunities for people to move back into the city. The hope is for Buffalo to once again be like its former self. Thanks to the ongoing support from political and economic leaders, Buffalo will soon return to its former glory. Hope the mission of revitalizing Buffalo works out. Can't wait to see what the future Buffalo holds. Now back to you, Brandon. Wow, some powerful stuff there, Brandon. Well, that'll do it for us at Channel 5 News at 10. From all of us at Channel 5 News, stay classy, Buffalo.